and then this one goes right here. You hear that? Welcome back, guys. Um, so, um, just to follow up here on the, on the video, I already took the, the fuel rail out right here. So, the most big pain in the butt about removing this that sits right there like that is this boat right here, it's not that bad, which is all the way in the back there on that side right there. But this one right here, as you can see, I have no distributor right there. So you have to take this bolt out of the distributor right there. That's a 15 millimeter. And that one I believe is a three eighths. And you have to take the, the distributor out. Make sure you mark everything, like where your distributor is facing, everything. Uh, make sure you do that before you remove it. Otherwise, you're, you're going to throw your, your truck off the timing and all that good stuff. As you can see over here, I made some markings from uh, 1 through 4 on this side and same thing. On the other side there, uh, I just marked it with a, with a little marker for my distributor so I don't have to keep going back to uh, to uh, which one, which one is it, whatever. Um, so the worst one is, is to remove, not even this one right here, which that's a 5.8 is this side right here, which is a pain in the butt, is like on the opposite side, so you gotta get like a, a small enough wrench on this side to try to counterclockwise um, to remove that uh, that fuel line over there, which is on this side right here. As you can see right there, see, so it's, it, 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 it's kinda like hidden. So it's sitting like this, so this one is no problem. This one that goes inside the fuel um, regulator there. But this other side here is the, the one that's a pain in the butt. I am not going to replace this bolt back because this one is behind the distributor. So I don't want to remove my distributor again just in case if I have to get back to this. The only one that I'm going to put is this one and obviously the ones in the rail. Like that one, this one, and this one right here. So just a just to update here with you guys. Um, I am going to remove my alternator, which I already did. I'm going to replace that. I just put duct tape there. I know I'm not supposed to put duct tape over here in the engine, but it's just it's not going to be for that long. I'm already replacing it. I already cleaned the gasket out. On that side the reason why he's hanging like this because I had a, a hard time taking out the EGR holes over there that comes from uh, the exhaust so I said I just put it towards the side like that and it's fine that was the pain in the butt back there I was thinking about eliminating this uh, this fuel uh, what is it called this thing? The fuel regulator here all together and just cut the rail here and then just extend my lines and stuff like that and put a another fuel regulator kind of like on the side of the truck over there. But um, I am not going to do that just because I don't have time and I got to get this baby on the road. Um, she was running rich uh, because of this fuel regulator and my injectors are in there and I'm getting new o-rings for it um, I did buy this kit over here this kit right here the new serpentine belt this kit right here of uh, the OTC injector uh, clean this is the the liquid that's gonna go on the, the fuel rail um, 
outfit is uh, all put together, but this is like a can. This is this laying system right here is a can that you put that that uh that uh, injector cleaner in here, and then um, here's my gauges right there. And what it does is. I'll hook it up to right here on the on the fuel rail, right when it's sitting over there. And you gotta add a shop vac to that to those gauges, and then you just pressurize about like 45 psi over here, and then uh, just let the truck run on that fluid. So I'll see if I can get a video of that when everything is done and apart. Everything is pretty much straightforward. Like I said, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just doing this on my own, doing research. Um, do your own research. Uh, another thing that I did, I removed all the wiring harness that was over here in front, just to put it towards the side. So I started going underneath the truck here. I started right there with my uh, crank sensor. Then from the crank sensor, there is a uh, right there there is the um, how do I say uh, a ground that's right there and then uh, it goes over here a couple of a couple of, um, uh, how do I say a couple of wires go goes over here a couple of connectors to the alternator. Uh, one over here for the the manifold absolute pressure sensor and then the engine coolant temperature sensor and then there is a couple of ones over here that goes in the throttle body right there and then there's one that goes over here a few over here for the evap system and the EGR valve so I just took everything out of here so I can work freely because I don't want um, me cutting any wires or anything like that when I put my body weight on top of the harness and stuff like that. I don't want that trouble. I know it takes me about like another 40, half hour for me to carefully remove all these, uh, all these sensor wires and stuff like that out of my way. But right now, the only thing that I have in front of me is an engine. Um, the... Uh, the AC system is over there towards the side. I had to unhook one of the, the lines over there, which is this one, which is fine. My AC wasn't working anyway, so it was empty. Don't worry about it. I didn't have to uh, take it to the mechanic so they can properly uh, drain my system because it was already there was already no pressure there because I put a gauge on it. Uh, so this is uh, just an update on this i didn't move my uh, i didn't remove my uh my uh, radiator hose i didn't feel like it was uh it was it's kind of in the way but it's not too bad it, it, it's fine i, I, I don't want to drain i i just i just did a, a, a engine cooling flush flush not too long ago so i didn't remove this and that's pretty much it oh uh the this is the this is the, the the fuel rail for the injectors here the harness it just clips on over there in the back one of the connectors there on the back so uh yeah and there's a couple of connectors here a couple of connectors here the it's a math sensor and then there's the temperature sensor there uh, like I said, that is pretty much it. Make sure you cover all your ports so uh, you have nothing going into your engines while you play, clean, doing whatever you got to do there. Um, hopefully this video here is helpful for uh, some of you that has this 454. It is a nice engine, but man, this is a pain in the butt taking this stuff out. I don't know. They could not They could have made... GM, Chevy, they could have made it a little bit better on this. I guess they do these things because uh, I don't know.
I have no idea. What, what am I saying? I'm not an engineer. I'm just a I'm just a regular person. Try to make a buck. All right. So take your time, guys. Take your time. You know, if you're in a rush, don't jump in this type of these type of jobs because this type of work on your engine because you can you can break something, ruin something, and if there's something to be replaced, you know what I mean, replace it right you there. Like if there's anything, any part that you like to replace that's down below here, do that, take your time, save money, um, but be wise. Uh, yeah, guys, give it a thumbs up. That will help me if you give it a thumbs up to uh, to YouTube saying that this is video. This video here is pretty good, and uh, and hopefully some of this information will help you.